So today we're going to compare three high-end monitors. We have a Acer 35-inch ZX350CU, a Dell 3014, and an HP Omen 32. The uh, Acer 35-inch here in front is equivalent of the Acer Predator 35, but this is the FreeSync variant instead of the G-Sync variant. The FreeSync variant works with AMD cards. It has an aspect ratio of 21 by 9, and it's a 2560 by 1080p display. It is uh, 144 hertz refresh rate, and it's a nice monitor. It's got that ultra-wide profile for wraparound view, works really great in driving games. This is the HP Omen 32. It has a refresh rate of 75 hertz. Its aspect ratio is 16 by 9, 2560 by 1440. It has uh, some of the newest features. It supposedly has LFC and the FreeSync. It's uh, HP's gaming line, and it's a brand new monitor that just came out in the last couple days. Last, we have the Dell 3014. It is a premium, business class, professionally calibrated monitor from about the 2013 time frame is when they were first released, I believe, late 2013. 2560 by 1600 is the resolution. It's just a 60 hertz monitor. It does not have gaming modes on it or high refresh, free sync, G sync, anything like that. But it is a premium monitor. Comes Adobe RGB color calibrated from the factory. And probably the best looking display of the three, although the Omen is close. We'll go ahead and get into the video review shortly and you can see for yourself. Hopefully the camera will pick up some of those quality differences. The HP Omen stand, the one here on the right, is a very simple stand. All it does is tilt adjust. It doesn't height adjust or articulate in any other way. It just tilts back and forth. It's probably the weakest of the three monitors as far as initial physical quality overview. Uh, it does have a little shake to it. If you touch it and bump it, then it's going to go ahead and vibrate for a while, which is really kind of lame. Uh, probably the best quality as far as just initial touch and feel is this Acer 35. The stand seems really solid. Um, it has ability to tilt and raise and lower. It just seems well made it's very sturdy it's not going to tip over and uh just a nice looking monitor the silver plastic on the bottom is well done there's an led light under here that you can change colors to and make flicker or breathe or kind of do the night rider theme anything you want with different colors and then i'll say second place is this dell 3014 the stand does everything on it it's, it rotates, it raises, it lowers, it tilts, it articulates any way you could possibly want. It even goes into portrait mode. Really nice display. Feels really good. Very strong display. Also feels very stable. All three of them, though, you're not going to have too many complaints as far as moving them around to your desk or vibration and use, that kind of stuff. It doesn't happen. I haven't had any issues with the HP Omen, even with the being the weakest of the three. As far as connection options... Probably the HP Omen is the easiest to use. Camera probably won't pick it up, but all, all the connections are in the back, so you don't have to look under for any of them. And the OSD display menu is three buttons driven there. It is Visa monitor uh, compatible as far as the mounting mechanisms. The Dell is as well. All the connectors go up under here, so you do have to look underneath the monitor to get to them, which is kind of a pain. And the Acer, is also under here like the Dell you have to get there so as far as USB connectivity the easiest for that is probably going to be the Dell the Dell has the USB connectors right here on the side and the others either have it on the back in the case of the Omen or on the underside as in the case of the Acer so neither of those is ideal but I'm not sure if very many people even use that USB pass-through for their monitors so uh, yeah I mean these are three nice displays um, premium monitors supposedly delivering a premium experience we'll go ahead and put them on the desk and give an idea how they work the machine we're going to be using today is a i7 4770k it's got 16 gigs of ram and a fury x card to play along with the free sync okay so i shut the pc off and my room is really dark uh, it's painted black walls. You can't see anything with the camera here. I'm going to flip it on and I'll show you the backlight bleed on this monitor. I reset everything default on the monitor right now. Okay, 
So the monitor came on, backlight bleed in eight spots. Count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, top and bottom. I took a couple pictures with the iPhone camera because the camcorder function on the iPhone wasn't picking up the light bleed as well as the camera does. If you split the difference between what you see in the camera and the camcorder, that's about what you see with your naked eye. That's a bad taste in my mouth right out of the gate. Neither the Dell nor the Omen have that issue. Once you're on the desktop, that doesn't really show up at all. It's only if a game flips like a loading screen and it's dark, or if uh, you're playing Doom and it's a dark level or something that you'll notice those eight spots. But if you know they're there, then you can look for them and see them and they're painful. One of the things that helps that I'd read online was uh, changing the gamma to 1.8. which uh, seems to help quite a bit. And then just dropping the brightness from there because out of the box, this thing's insanely bright. Back out one more level, see if I can pay very close attention to this to not push the wrong button. And we'll drop the brightness down to about 20. Okay, so one of the coolest things about this monitor, this Acer 35, is if you watch a 21 by nine aspect ratio movie and it fills up the entire screen, that looks really, really nice. Uh, there's no black bars anywhere. It's the entire peripheral, the nice curved screen does its job. Okay, this is uh, the 4K YouTube video and uh, it looks really good on this Acer. There's black bars on the left and right, obviously, but uh, even though you're only at 1080 pixels tall, it, I think it hits above its weight class here and this looks really sharp especially if you're back just a little bit to kind of let your eyes not be able to see the individual pixels this is from the distance I'm sitting now as competitive as the other monitors it looks nice thought I'd give you a taste of kind of the older games that don't work well in this resolution we're gonna load up Age of Empires 3 the complete edition. Okay, right away you can tell like any kind of video is definitely going to be stretched. Uh, how tolerable that is, is up to you. You can see there's black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. There would be black bars on a 16 by 9, but it wouldn't be stretched because this is, you know, 21 by 9 full aspect. So like, logos are stretched, any of the trailers are stretched. It's all pretty rough. Now you could get around that, I suppose, by on these older games by setting your resolution to 1080p and just have big black bars on left and right. But then at that point, you got a 27-inch 1080p monitor, and that doesn't make any sense to me. So you got an idea of that? I'm going to go ahead and skip through this movie. Now it looks like it's got the right resolution, at least somewhat close by the yeah 2560 by 1080 by the look let's just do uh learn to play or single player skirmish sure whatever i just want to see what it looks like in game so you can see the hud's all stretched this is typical of any of these older games that i've played and i've been a gamer since the 80s so got a lot of a lot of old games i mean this is really just bad to me. I don't want to play games like this. So if it's not a new title, you might as well not even bother with these big wide screens. I mean, look at the HUD on the bottom. It's A, enormous, and B, stretched to smithereens. I mean, that's almost unreadable. I mean, you can read it, it just looks terrible. You can't even tell what this is. This is supposed to be a soldier, but because it's so stretched, it's not readable. I'm loading up chivalry right now. The menus and the the introduction screens and all that stuff leave you left and right black bars, which is, if it doesn't stretch, a lot of times you get the black bars. And so, yeah, the black bars would be preferable to stretching. But uh, in this particular game, my problem is that even though I've got a nice big wide screen, everything looks stretched off to the side. Um, watch how the catapult goes from small to big as it gets over to the side of your screen. 
It's because the FOV isn't quite right, so the fisheye effect is there. And it's kind of a nuisance when you're playing. And, and frankly, most games of any age just do this, as I keep showing. Uh, I have lots and lots of examples of games that aren't quite right with the FOV, as compared to the relative few ones that work great, uh, the brand new titles. To be fair, I loaded up another old RTS. This is uh, Age of Mythology. The, re the remade version that's available on Steam, it's been updated. And they include support for 2560 by 1080 right out of the box. And the UI looks fine on this. Actually, this is a pretty reasonable looking setup. Of course, there's a lot more width than height, so you don't know what's going on right above you. But you can tell a long way to the side. I'd personally rather, rather play this with a 16x10 resolution like that Dell. First time you load up Doom on this monitor, you can see it's almost unreadable. This is uh, on the 35 inch Acer. It defaults to some super low resolution and it's really junky until you get it, until you get it going. In fact, it's so junky it's hard to even read what's happening on the screen. So, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you got to deal with. Doom's a new title. It plays beautifully when you get it to the right resolution. But until you get to that point, it's hard to even read what's on the screen. We go to settings, video. And we'll, it's got 640 by 480 and stretched to blazes. So we need to change it first to 16, or uh, the lowest 21 by 9. And then we got our res poking out, and we can do, uh, see I can't even, I can't even read what my options are there. I think I just pushed escape, but I think it says I want to apply, and I say yes. And now it's, now it's gorgeous. So, I mean, that I encounter in quite a few games where the settings are glitched out when you first load it. The speakers on this thing are actually really good. Uh, sounds almost as good as my desktop speakers, these little Altec Lansings I have. So for a monitor, excellent speakers that are built into this Acer. Okay, it's loaded up. I'm not going to be able to hold the camera and move at the same time, but this gives you an idea. It's actually very, very good in the sense that it's so good you almost don't even notice that it's ultra wide. There's not any noticeable no, I just died because I'm not moving and shooting at the same time. But there's not any noticeable stretching on the corners. Overall, the experience in playing Doom is excellent. Like, it's really excellent. I don't have any complaints with that whatsoever. Just finished a round of multiplayer, 2 to 1 kill to death ratio. Man, widescreen in Doom almost makes up for all the flaws of this monitor. It's so good. Works really, really well. The 144 hertz is nice and smooth. The widescreen gives you extra peripheral viewing. It's what this monitor is made for, and it does it very well. Here's another example. Loaded up a game for the first time since switch switching. This is Dirt Rally. You can see that the resolution's off, or maybe you can't see, but I can see. It's definitely using a lower resolution so typical of almost every game that you load up for the first time with this monitor the resolutions are bad Let's see where we're at we're at 1440 by 900 oh, that's not that terrible it's not right though we'll change the refresh rate to 144 the extra content on the left and right for racing games is phenomenal uh, it looks really good now I'm not quite keep it 144 frames per second on this single Fury X card with the max everything setting, it looks like it's at 125 to 130 uh, in that range. But uh, yeah, it looks really sharp. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better driving experience than this monitor, in my opinion. The lower height, uh, the lesser height, rather, is not a factor. You don't need to be looking up at the sky when you're racing, but the peripheral vision just makes it seem all that much more real. I used to use iFinity with three monitors, and this beats the snot out of iFinity. No black bars, no uh, getting in the way of the view. The viewing experience just really smooth. I can't tell you how good this is. For just day-to-day -day use, I think the curve lacks. When you're looking at uh, pictures or videos, 
it's hard to see when things are square. Uh, your mouse movement, at least maybe initially, maybe it takes a little while to get used to it, but I'm not used to it yet. If you try to click on like a progress bar in a video to fast forward or something, the curve kind of throws you off. Your hand-eye coordination just a little bit. Um, I like a flat monitor better, I think, in general. However, for this racing game and for some of the games that are made just for, you know, with the aspect ratio program in with FOVs correct and everything like Doom, when you're in the game, it's just a really overwhelming sense of realism that kind of takes over and the curve feels very natural on this driving game very natural on doom so much so that like when i was playing doom for the first time with the widescreen you don't even really notice the extra real estate on the left and the right it just feels natural it doesn't throw you off it doesn't feel weird it isn't like oh my gosh it's there it just feels natural and very much like how it should be same way with this racing game like this is the way it should be played in a game like path of exile say diablo something along those lines your health and your mana are so far away to the left and the right of the screen that they actually are kind of out of your your focusing sight when you're playing the game. And it can be, if you're playing hardcore mode where you only have one life, you can be dead. And then also, I mean, look at the disparity between the left, right. If you're going to try to fight or shoot something out here uh, or way out here versus you just have such a short area at the top. This particular map is going to look advantageous because it's going left to right. But if the map isn't going left to right, and to say going up, you don't have a whole lot of view there. And I think that's pretty obvious. Now as far as movement artifacts, this is probably worse than the Omen for some reason. Let me zoom in on it, you can kind of watch how that blurs up. Do you see how it's real clear? And as soon as you move, it gets blurry. That's not ideal. Uh, I'm going to play with some settings and see if I can fix that a little bit. So yeah, I mean, this is not my first choice at all for like a Diablo style or action RPG type game. No, I don't know how to fix it. I mean, there might be a way if I tinkered with it for a long time, but I turned off game mode and I turned off anti-aliasing and it's still the same problem. The text just blurs as you drive. This is a problem with both the Omen and the Acer. It is not a problem with the Dell 3014. The Dell 3014, the text stays just as sharp if you're moving as if you're standing still. Uh, maybe someone in the comments will be able to tell me what that is, but that's kind of a nuisance. The other thing I want to point out here, and this may not be the exact right place to do it, I could do it on the desktop, but the uh, on-screen GUI on this monitor is absolutely terrible. There's like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, six buttons on the bottom. You have no clue what's doing what. Uh, I can't even figure out how I get this menu up half the time. Sometimes it doesn't come up. So on the left-hand side is your quick your quick settings or your game mode it just turned game mode on even though it normally goes to quick settings uh, so I pushed one because that's my quick save two you can see it's changing the light two is another setting so I'll go back to one one's where my gamma is so you have the first four buttons are the things there and then you have to go over to the fifth button and hit the right and then if you want to get into the actual menus you have to basically guess because there's only three up there and I guess wrong guess wrong 90% of the time this is an absolute horrible menu structure but this is what it looks like uh, so you're gonna go down you have all your different modes here I had to change the gamma to 1.8 because if you have it on 2.2 the blacklight bleed is really bad and I'd read online that the Acer Predator 35 is kind of the same way that 1.8 looks better let's try to get back in there it just timed out on me uh, if you hit the wrong button it powers off because the far right buttons the power so I've done that quite a few times as well Oh, see, now I'm in the wrong menu once more. I'm choosing my input source, which is not what I wanted to do. Um, I, I baffles me that Acer does not have a better menu selection than this. I can't, I can't figure it out, and I've played with it quite a bit. So to the right, and then I, again, I'm just guessing, because they don't seem to line up directly with, or at least when you're not directly centered with if they're sitting in the middle of a 35 inch screen and it's off to the right you can't tell exactly where the button is in line with the thing you're supposed to push there's where you would save your quick settings and uh, you can see everything's kind of set in there these are the different modes you can see that actually they're all just brighter my custom one just turned it down because it's just too bright out of the box so let's go back to my user mode and show you the desktop experience Okay, so uh, if 
you have your explore window open. The text on this isn't bad. Uh, it's the biggest text of any of the three monitors we're looking at, but it's not bad. It's maybe not as sharp as owns because there's less pixels. If we open up a couple web browsers, that's where I can complain. I don't like this at all. I don't like the idea that everything opens up to full screen and when you open it to full screen it's worthless because you're it's so wide and there's so much dead space and so you have to constantly playing with menus you can't just have one browser open easily you got to be using the click to drag to uh, to take the windows to half screen on the left and right that windows implements so it's nice there's workarounds but it's it's just really not that great uh, for desktop use in my opinion compared to the other two monitors I, I can use the other two in full screen mode and enjoy a full browser instance this one's just way too much white space so I mean to compare uh, it looks okay I feel like this monitor is a little washed out I feel like it's the worst colors of the three out of the box I think the Dell has the best picture quality slightly out of the box over the Omen which is close and then this is kind of a far away third for just out of the box settings okay so we click on ambient light and right now it's on blue you can change the color to be white orange random uh, monitor status or based on your frame rate which is kind of cool and then um, if we go to red to kind of match my stuff and then we change it down to the next thing here it's at fixed now you can change it to breathing where it slowly pulses flashing which is a faster pulse ripple which is kind of hard to tell but it's a night rider style where it's going left to right and then just the fixed and then you can change the brightness of it too because it's pretty bright by the monitor reset so I just drop it down to the bottom the mode is on we're at 144 hertz. As you can see, this actually seems to have more ghosting on it than both the Dell and the Omen. There's a strong black line between all three ships. And you know what's surprising to me, and the most surprising thing of all this to me, is that the least blur I expected to be on one of these three, potentially this 144 hertz, but the least blur is on the Dell. It's not on the 75 hertz free sync. It's not on the 144 hertz free sync. It's on the Dell 60 uh, hertz professional monitor in Adobe RGB mode, which is how I like to use it. And not even in game mode. Only the top ship on the Dell 3014 has blur. The other two have no blur. So uh, I don't know what to make of that. Maybe somebody else can comment on it as they might uh, have more of an understanding of why that is. Try to pick some of these other things, but again, since the refresh rate doesn't match what the camera's recording at, these probably aren't that good of a thing to show. These chasing squares look pretty good. I, I, I think actually the Dell was the best on this too. There's a little bit of a shadow behind each one. I don't see the white bleeding into the blue or anything, but there's definitely a white shadow and a blue shadow to my naked eye. I wouldn't rate it that high. I'd probably give it a three for my personal purposes. I like the Omen quite a bit better and I like the Dell quite a bit better. Overall, this monitor, kind of give a wrap up here, has some real positives, namely driving or first person shooters that are brand new first person shooters where the FOV is built right. Uh, desktop use, not my favorite. I don't like, like I say, when you open an IE window and it just covers the entire screen and you got to go hunt and peck all over the place for the particular. I mean, look at that. That's really a nuisance. For the minimize or the drag it over to the left and all that kind of thing. Everything opens that way and it's big. Anytime you open a game, especially older games, it picks the wrong resolution. Even the newer ones, like I said, Doom did it 640 by 480 at this giant res and it was hardly even readable to figure out how to change options to what you wanted. I feel like this monitor might be a little ahead of its time as far as this particular resolution aspect ratio. The only real use case for this is movies, 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which work really well. 
in modern games, which also work really well. But I think just general use, desktop use, I'm not a fan. So here's the HP Omen. It's a 32 inch. AMVA panel. No backlight bleed. Kind of the user experience. Here's MSN. Here's hard form. This is synced to 75 hertz. Here's a 4K YouTube trailer of the new Star Wars. You can see there's black bars on top and bottom. 16 by 9 video. We'll take a look at that. And obviously 16 by 9 aspect ratio fills up the whole screen. It looks really sharp. There's no question. This Omen has great colors. And it just looks really good. Yeah, I'll show briefly what text looks like on this Omen 32 inch. Someone online said that uh, 32 inch at 1440p is the same DPI as 24 inch at 1080p. And subjectively I say that's about accurate. Text looks really good. I don't know how the camera's picking it up, but uh, when you're looking at it with the naked eye, you can't really see pixels at a normal desk viewing distance. And by that I mean I have a fairly large desk and um, the monitor is sitting maybe two and a half, three feet back. Show you briefly the GUI menu here. There's one, two, three buttons on the back side. You've got an inner button on the bottom and the top two buttons are your navigation buttons. It's a really nice system. It works really well. So under the quick view, you can see your generic, uh, basically factory options as far as the color settings. If you go to a different mode besides gaming FreeSync, then initially, and if you save it with a checkbox and then low and then save and return, you'll actually see that FreeSync will turn off. You can see up there it says FreeSync off. So I haven't checked which settings completely all work. I know that the custom one works with FreeSync and the gaming FreeSync work. So custom is basically just gaming free sync where I turn the brightness down just a smidgen because it's a little bright out of the box. I haven't played with the colors at all on this monitor. It's just out of the box with the brightness turned down a little bit. And then free sync turned back on. If we go back into the menu system, that's how you would change your input. You have a little banner that pops up that tells you what input's active and push it twice more and then and you also have an information menu if you go to the top button you have all your typical monitor controls and if you go down to information you can see that that we're at 75 Hertz and that um, I've got this monitor in use for 27 hours already it's pretty impressive and I just got it last week firing up doom no backlight bleed everything looks really nice we'll, uh, resume a campaign here so I've just spent about the last 30 minutes playing with this monitor and I feel like it's as smooth as the other one and looks better, I shouldn't say the other one, than the Acer and looks better than the Acer. In my subjective opinion, beats the Acer. Uh, 75 frames per second never dips off 75 frames per second with the Fury X means butter smooth and I, to my eyes I I don't think I can tell the difference between 75 and 144 I don't I don't know if anyone really can to be honest with you but uh, I certainly cannot so yeah I mean this looks fantastic it plays just like silk the colors are good my one gripe on this one as compared to the Dell 3014 is that the vertical height, even though it's just a little bit, I think there's a difference between 16 by 10 and 16 by nine, even with the 32 inch versus the 30, the 32 inch 16 by nine versus the 30 inch 16 by 10. I feel like I might be, and I, it's because I've played for the last two years on the Dell, the 3014. So I'm used to that aspect ratio, but I feel like there's just a little hype missing here. 
And anyone used to a 16 by 9 monitor is probably not even going to notice that whatsoever. Uh, so it's it's a it's a null factor for most people, I would assume. But there's a little bit of that for me. Gorgeous, like gorgeous. This looks better than the Acer. In my opinion, this beats the Acer as far as the Doom experience. All right, we'll move on to Battlefront. Okay, so I'm gonna be filming with one hand and moving with the other, it's not gonna be very good. But I, I've played quite a bit of Doom with this monitor, with this HP 32 inch Omen. And it's super smooth. 75 Hertz FreeSync does what it's supposed to do. I mean, it just looks really good. Uh, colors are great, black levels are great. 75 Hertz non-stop constant with the Fury X video card. This is a phenomenal Doom experience. On the Dell 3014, I prefer anti-aliasing off. With the Acer 35, I think I prefer anti-aliasing on because it helps reduce the pixel structure view. But anti-aliasing off on the Dell 3014 because I feel like it sort of blurs everything, like a layer of Vaseline's over the screen with AA on, in my opinion. So, Battlefront's famous long delays before each level. I mean, this looks really good. This is on par with that. This is on par with the Dell 3014, and it looks better. It just looks better than the Acer. The extra resolution helps. I mean, you can't see any pixel structure. Everything's just a little sharper. Colors are great. Brightness is there. This is a good looking screen. Still looks really good, but it's a more of a traditional setup. I think the Acer beats the HP Omen in this particular game just for the extra peripheral view, which just works great with racing games. There's absolutely zero problem with this. This looks fantastic too but it doesn't have that extra width, which ends up being probably an extra three or four inches on each side of the screen with the other one. And the vertical height, you don't miss in a racing game. That'd be looking at the sky. You have plenty of road height and that kind of thing when you're playing on the Acer, so. No motion blur, looks super smooth, no complaints there. Now, I've been playing with this monitor for the last few days. Path of Exile might be its only chink in the armor. I really like this display. I really enjoy the free sync. I like the lack of vertical tearing. The 75 hertz refresh rate aligned for 75 FPS does seem a little better than 60 FPS. But one thing I will note is on Path of Exile, um, there's perhaps a little bit of blurring when you have weapon names on the ground and you're walking around. Before that game, I was pretty much all in on this monitor. And I probably still am. But it's worth noting that that's something that I've encountered. Everything looks really good. It's nice and crisp and clear. As I attack these people and things start dropping on the ground, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. And it's really not that bad. But it's just a little worse than the Dell 3014, I think. The motion blur on those, on those names of the items. Let's see if we can pick it up with the camera. I'm not sure it will relay in the video well or not. But I'll try to do the same thing with the Dell and show you the slight difference there. Colors are really sharp. I mean, it looks great. But overall, yeah, it looks it looks really good. And it's a nice experience. Again, capped at 75 frames per second. Never deviating off that speed. So all that is nice. This is actually visible in the video since I'm holding it one hand and clicking with the other. Um, but yeah, if, if you look at that... Let me see if we can zoom in on it a little more. If you look at the soldier boots, it's almost like the text gets a little thinner as you run. And the camera's probably not fast enough to pick up the the effect. It's still it's still legible and it's still very playable. Just maybe a step down, a half step down from the Dell 3014 experience on this particular game. You can see on the top one there's a little blur, bottom one a little blur, and, and the middle one even a little blur but nothing terrible. Uh, let's pick up another one and see how they compare. 
This is a uh, chase squares, and the, chair, the squares are supposed to be distinct and unique. You can see that they are. They don't blur together, so that's nice. This monitor is a real winner. The colors look really good. The DPI is really nice. 75 hertz free sync is, uh, is really as nice as they say it is. Thumbs up. The price is excellent. I mean, I can't believe HP put a monitor together like this for $400 MSRP. Uh, just phenomenal. Considering the Dell was like a $1,500 monitor when it came out in 2014, and this is very competitive with the Dell, that's a big statement. This is a nice monitor. If you picked up this HP Omen, I think you did well. It's a good-looking display. It's got great colors. It's got a nice DPI. It's got a good refresh rate. Everything about it is really nice quality. Power on experience with Dell. You power it on. There's a little black light bleed in the bottom corner, as you can see. Um, and then you're presented your desktop. Okay, this is Doom with the Dell 3014. It's locked on 60 frames per second. The Fury card never deviates from that. I just spent the last well, 20 minutes or so playing with the Dell after using the Omen for the last few days. Initially, from going to the Omen, the Dell has a little bit better quality picture, just a smidgen. You gain a little height at the loss of a little width. I think the 75 hertz versus 60 hertz is slightly noticeable in favor of the 75 hertz with FreeSync. But since neither monitor never deviates off the max, 75 hertz versus 60 hertz, the uh, the frame tearing and that type of type of thing isn't really an issue with either monitor. They're both just capped out with no problem whatsoever on this Fury X card. The thing is, it's probably a little bit of a trade-off. Maybe a little better picture, like I say, on the Dell, slightly, versus a little smoother response on the Omen, slightly. And uh, probably a toss-up in Doom on which, on which one is preferred. Again, I don't have uh, two hands to do this, so just give you an idea. It looks really good. I mean, there's nothing to complain about here either. 60 frames per second doesn't bother you, and I don't think it really bothers me. And this is a great route. It's a really nice display. There might be a little bit more backlight bleeding on the IPS than the VA panel, slightly. Um, but it's not anything terribly to complain about. In driving games, the Dell probably is going to maybe come in the third place. Um, it's going to have a little bit less refresh rate. It still looks super smooth. There's nothing to complain about here whatsoever. Um, the colors might be a smidge a bit more accurate with the Dell 3014. And I don't use the Dell 3014 in gaming mode. I use an Adobe RD RGB. Um, which is the professionally calibrated version from the factory. Looks really good. There's a little bit extra width on the HP Omen and a lot of extra width on the Acer. The Acer is hands down the best for driving game. Things being recorded at 30 frames per second, so all this smoothness is probably going to look the same to the viewer. I can't Personally, I can't notice that huge of a difference between 16 and 35. A little favor towards the 75, it's not night and day. Both are a really good experience. As far as desktop use on the Dell 3014, it's probably the best. Uh, the text is the sharpest. More of a toss-up between the HP Omen and the Dell 3014 than it is with the Acer. The Acer's 1080p resolution vertically kind of hurts it somewhat with Windows use, I think. But uh, both this display and the HP Omen are excellent displays for just generic Windows use. If I load up a couple IE windows, we can kind of take a look at how those look. Let me get hard for them up here as another comparison. So you can kind of get an apples to apples. We had MSN up here earlier. Apples to apples on how everything looks. Uh, looks good on both displays. Uh, the HP Omen in this. Uh, this is that same trailer we watched earlier. You can see because the aspect ratio is a little taller, we actually have larger bars on the top and the bottom. 
That still looks really good. HP has a little bit better black levels, the Omen, than the IPS does. So that's something worth noting. 4K here. We watched a few minutes ago. On the other monitor. Looks really good. Like the HP Omen, it's a really crisp, clear picture. Nothing to complain about. 4K video at a little over 2K on this one, whereas the HP Omen is actually 2K. This is a little over 2K. Looks really, really good. There is a little black bar on the top and the bottom, again, because of the aspect ratio. You can kind of see it here when my cursor goes up into that black bar area. And a little less width than the HP Omen, as we saw in the physical comparison, but still looks really, really nice. I'll show you briefly the Dell 3014 menu structure. It's all touch sensitive, and one thing that's kind of cool about it, if you get any even close to it, the buttons light up. It's got some sort of, uh, like a touch lamp function. But that's your main menu. Click in there, and you can change, you can customize this menu. It's got a really nice GUI. Everything's really easy to click because all the buttons light up for what you want to highlight. If you go to the preset menu, again, I always use the color space menu for Adobe RGB. That's my favorite mode. It looks beautiful. It's a professionally calibrated mode. They also have a gaming mode, which you can go up to. Um, supposed to have a little fast, faster response time. I am not super uh, concerned with that. I'd rather have a little bit better picture. The difference is pretty minimal, both for quality and for speed, in my experience on this monitor. This has been my monitor for the last two years. I'm really happy with it. It's a, it's a great display. Uh, I am debating between this and the Omen right now on which one to keep. Now, believe it or don't, but I'm just comparing these displays, and this Dell 3014 seems to have less ghosting. Only the bottom one shows any ghosting of any noticeable amount, and the top two rows don't show ghosting. This is at 60 hertz. Change this test to another one. Here's the chasing squares. And yes, I think actually these two squares are a little bit more distinct. So yeah, if you have a Dell 3014 and you're not bothered by 60 hertz, you probably can just stay there comfortably. It's a nice monitor. A fully articulating stand, great DPI, looks good on the desktop, not too small uh, as far as icons or folder structures, that kind of thing. Very nice display. The first monitor we looked at today was this Acer XZ350CU. It has an aspect ratio of 21 by 9, a resolution of 2560 by 1080, it has a max refresh rate of 144 Hz, and it is AMD FreeSync enabled. The pixel refresh is 4 milliseconds. The price on this is pretty high. The MSRP is about $1,300, but you can find it street price for $800 or $900. It has a curved display, which I thought was great for gaming, but not optimal for desktop use. Maybe my frustrations with it were time-based, but I used this monitor for a couple days and I didn't feel like my depth perception was quite right. If I tried, for instance, to click a slider on a YouTube video or whatnot, I felt like it was kind of difficult to know exactly where to move my mouse to find that slide. And again, maybe that gets better over time, but in my limited interaction with this monitor, I found that kind of frustrating. The 144 Hz FreeSync was excellent. There's excellent uh, speakers on board. It has a great stand and great build quality. But the menu system, uh, built with the buttons on the bottom, is awful. My particular monitor had bad backlight bleed, which was resolved mostly by turning it down to a gamma of 1.8. But for a premium monitor, I thought the amount of backlight bleed was inexcusable. This monitor has a very specific purpose in my mind. Modern racing games and first-person shooter games were excellent in this 21 by 9 aspect ratio when the FOV was fully supported. That's a very limited use case. For older games that use 1080p or even a 4x3 aspect ratio, like 1600 by 1200 you had big black bars on left and right. And at that point, you're using a much smaller monitor and pixel structure, like a 27-inch 1080p. I didn't appreciate that. And now a lot of the games, when they tried to go to full screen, they would end up being really stretched. So older games, I don't think, are a good match to this monitor. Newer games seem to work pretty well. The other thing worth pointing out is that uh, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, most of that content is 16 by 9. And in 16 by 9, this is going to be basically equivalent of a 27 inch 1080p screen. 
Overall, I wouldn't really recommend this monitor unless your, your primary concern in buying this monitor is that you like first-person shooters and that you like driving sims or arcade driving games. In those two categories, this is a, a big winner. Otherwise, I think I'd try one of the other two monitors first. Next up, we have the 32-inch HP Omen. That's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 2560 by 1440 resolution, and has a 75 hertz refresh rate. It does have AMD FreeSync. There's a 5 millisecond pixel response time. The price on this is about $450 street price as compared to the MSRP of $560. I thought this was a fantastic value. It really traded blows with Dell 3014, which was a $1,500 monitor a few years ago. The visual quality was on par, it had a great GUI, the 75Hz FreeSync is actually as, as maybe not as nice as some people would have you believe, but is noticeably an improvement over a 60Hz gaming experience. There is no backlight bleed whatsoever. It has easy upscaling for 1080p content. A couple faults are that it lacks speakers and that it doesn't have any kind of articulation on the stand. Overall it's a really great monitor, great colors, great text, great desktop experience, just a high quality display. I don't really have any complaints on this monitor. For the price, it's an excellent value. Finally, we have the Dell 3014. It has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels. It has a 60 hertz refresh with a pixel response time of 6 milliseconds. The price on this one's pretty high. The MSRP was $1,500 and now you can find them for maybe $900 new or maybe $600 used. But for desktop use, I think this is the best overall quality display of the three. It has excellent articulating stand that does anything you could possibly want it to do, including portrait rotation. It has probably the least blur of all three of these displays, even though the other two displays are considered gaming displays. This form factor, the 30-inch form factor, came out in like 2003, so even older games support this 2560 by 1600 resolution. Its primary purpose is probably where color accuracy and visual quality is of the utmost importance. If you're a photo editor or if you need those types of things for your particular occupation, this is the monitor to go for. The 16 by 10 aspect ratio works really good in Windows. You have a little bit extra height pixels to work with. I don't have any complaints for this monitor. It's really an excellent monitor overall. So what about FreeSync? Well, one of these monitors today had a 60 hertz refresh without FreeSync, and one had a 75 hertz rate with FreeSync, and one had a 144 hertz refresh rate with FreeSync. To me, to my eyes, I couldn't tell the difference between the 75 hertz refresh rate and the 144 hertz refresh rate, but I think I could tell the difference between the 75 hertz and the 60 hertz. And the way I could tell that is a lot of the cutscenes seem to be reduced back down to 60 hertz when you get into a cutscene for a game like Doom. So you've been playing at 75 hertz for a while. When you get to that cutscene at 60 hertz, it seems a little bit jerky compared to what you've been used to with 75 hertz. I didn't experience that any stronger with the 144 hertz monitor. More importantly than the, is what FreeSync does to the screen tearing. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal if your monitor can be maxed out at the VSync maximum, so 60 hertz. But if you drop below that, you experience tearing on your typical monitor platform that doesn't either have G-Sync or FreeSync enabled. And with the FreeSync, I don't think I've experienced a single torn frame. And it might be one of those things that you don't even know what you're missing until you see it, or until you go back from seeing it. But it is a nice experience. So which display is my favorite? Uh, it's either the HP Omen 32 or the Dell 3014. I haven't decided which one. I may be leaning towards the HP Omen 32 because of the AMD FreeSync. The 75 Hertz is a little smoother. More importantly, frame tearing is all but eliminated. A game like uh, Wolfenstein New Order that had lots of frame tearing with uh, Dell 3014 has none uh, with AMD FreeSync. So that's a big boon to a gamer. The Dell 3014 has a little better colors and maybe a little better DPI. But uh, since I spend most of my time on my personal PC doing a PC game versus doing any kind of photography editing... I think I may be leaning towards the HP Omen 32. The moral of the story is if you have a Dell 3014, it's a great display and you don't really need to upgrade. 
And if you have an HP Omen 32 with a 75 hertz refresh rate, you probably don't need to be wondering what's going on with the 144 hertz refresh rate or the 200 hertz refresh rate that some of the new monitors are, are championing. I think both of these displays are probably about as good as it gets right now for PC monitors, and you should be happy with either one.